Andrew's 49.55. He's going to get a new interior fitted today. So it's not that bad, but some of it up there at the back, where is it there? The materials kind of come off the foam because the foam degrades and then the material falls off. So he's got an interior kit come with it when he bought it. He's going to stick that in today. I'm going to go up to Dove Farms and have a look at something interesting that they're selling and have a bit of a look around if we can because they've got a Magnum as well, actually. Chester update, he has gone on here once, but he can't do it now. Getting up, getting up. No. Nope. Come on. There we go, oh, really? No, no. But if you stroke the back of his neck, he uses his head then as leverage. He gets up. But he shouldn't be on there. Come, down. Down. Don't look cute, get down. No, that's why you're not allowed on there. These have arrived, they're like, Snazzy cards, obviously plain, so you can use them for all different occasions. So they'll come in handy for different things because I often get, after you know, send a thank you card or different things like that to people or birthday cards. Look at that, a Chury Red Richard Weston trailer that someone's graffitied the back and then there's a vent coming the other way with another trailer on. That's a, I don't know what make a trailer that was. Stuck behind it on the A1 on the way to look at this plow. It's a bit windy, I hope you can hear me. Oh, look at that for a beast. What do you reckon it weighs? Five ton? Here he is. Follow me on YouTube. What's hey, the channel? Hey, uh, Dove Farms. Dove Farms on YouTube. Yeah. This though, it's a... Uh, what's that? Uh, that's one, two, eight, no. Six there. Six there, then another four on the back, but you could even put another one behind it. But that's just a normal is it Delta for a Dowswell there. So if you put a headstock on, you've got a small plow. And then it's ridiculously long. So hopefully the 936 would pull it after the sunflowers. I think we should go look at your Magnum as well, you know. Rob's got the pants on to match. Simba, so this is a bit like a sumo. Oh, it's like discs before the legs, isn't it? Didn't know that. I suppose it stops the legs blocking, doesn't it? So it's better than a sumo in some ways. It's a right machine, but in wrong hands, you can have too much X pattern on. And you can end up piping it up in the middle. Oh, like a drill. And uh, so a lot of people don't like them, and I don't know why. Them discs are massive, aren't they? Right. What are they, 24 inches or something? No. 30 inch discs. Well, I mean, they're destined to come up front and we're getting new ones. Uh, oh no, the new ones up front right. for, uh, for next time. But we put legs in about that depth. So. It's all right, isn't it? And it folds up, they're narrow as well. Yeah, oh, they manually fold up on these turn buckles and push them around, which is a bit of a, uh, a tube. But yeah, and then roll the good machine. Real good machine. Looks it, it's well made. It's even got a more uni drill. So these were the sort of the one of the first direct drills. We used to have one. Didn't have these on the front though. It was a slightly earlier model. So you've got your disc and you've got your coulter. So the disc cuts the slot, coulter puts it in, press wheel smooths it down. This one's got a sulky meter and unit. No, it's not. Oh, I thought it was. It's got an accord meter and unit on it. I thought the ones with the green tanks had the sulky meter and unit on because that's what ours had. Sorry, ours had an accord one and it's a red tank. They had some that were sulky tanks that were like a more of a box drill turned the other way. So this must be quite a late model actually. With electric controls. We used to have an oil seal going here somewhere all the time, it was a right nuisance. So we found the right one. But yeah, really good drill. They still make them now for grassland, and I think they put cultures in between the two, so you've got a lot less, sorry, a lot more cultures per meter. So a narrower row width. But yeah, dead simple drill. Lots of output. Really, everyone's just copied them since. So John Deere's an evolution of it. The, the, the horse is an evolution of it as well. And you've obviously got a couple of combi drills here for those that like to mash the worms up. This is what Robin should have bought. A proper case tractor. This is like what replaced the 1455s as being the, the flagship model. A magnum. 
Let's have a look in the cab. Love the way the grid carries on round. It's even got a carpeted door. The door, carpet on it. Digital dash, gearbox, just straight forward, which is a little bit like Andrew's 4955. It's so like I said, an aftermarket clock fitted. CB. What's that? No. Oh. Bluetooth. Proper tractor. Seat swivels as well. Huge armrest. Not really room for a passenger though. Aircon. Size of that bonnet. No front fenders or mud guards, whichever you want to call it, depending on where you're watching from. There's a quiz question. What's this on the back of a John Deere? That's the back of it. That's the tractor it's on. Does anyone recognise what that's off? Should we show them the badge and make it a little bit easier for them? Rico. Nice spray there if someone wants to make a sprayer on a fast track or convert it for Avidex or something. For sale as well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just dropping Rob off and there's his fleet of Bailey trailers. And then, got a big Beastie Magnum. 380, good monster. Bit of a beastie actual flow there on tracks. Doesn't give us a bigger flat footprint though as a Lexan, does it really? Because it kind of like pitches up, which is probably good for in wet ground because it can climb out easier. But when you're going up and down all the time, you've only got like sort of half the length of the track touching the floor compared to the class. I don't know whether there's a painting issue there and that's why they do it or what, I don't know. Trunk looks really well as well. The header here. It's a similar header trailer to the class one actually because it's got it's got a linkage down the side again. So the rear of some steers. No mud guards actually which is good because it means you don't rip them off. Of that bucket for chip. Stand next to it, Rob, for scale. <laughs> Could look happy about it. <laughs> How good does that look? 540 horsepower, Vario gearbox. The exhaust bigger than bigger than that crop master I got me, Dad. Proper that. On a sumo quattro. Category 4 linkage. And then 380 case. Six, seven, eight. Is that nine for her? No. Yeah. The monster. It's not as long as it's not as long as the dial as well, is it though? Beast. The size of that exhaust compared to me. Bit of amateur footage from Rob there. It's huge, isn't it? Makes them less powerful, though, doesn't it? All that emission is rubbish. That's about it for today. Some cool tracks at Rob's yard. He works for um, Belcourt. So they obviously use cases. And thanks for, for Dove Farm for showing us round. And hopefully we can sort some transport out and get that plough back over to mine. And we'll try it on the 936 and then maybe one day get something like this to put it on and we can have a play with that as well everyone's like why are you buying a plow well a few reasons one when they have the spuds on a plow can level it quite well two where the sunflowers are we always want to keep them in the same place because that's where the infrastructure is for the car park and the way the sunflower maze works but we're getting a weed burden now that we can't control with chemistry normally you control it with rotation and we put something else on it and then we go back to sunflowers a couple of years later but because we can't do that if we plow them underneath we'll basically start a clean slate because we've not plowed that field for 10 or 15 years so hopefully we'll bring up some nice clean soil with no weed burden in it and then the sunflowers next year will be weed free and if you're going to buy a plow you get more value for your money buying a 10 for a plow than you would buying like a five for a plow for 
for the 724 or a 6 for a plow because it's a limited market of people that can use them kind of plows and if you're a big farm that needs a 10 for a plow you generally buy a new one every few years anyway so that's the reasoning and also it's a good day out see rob i've not seen him since before covid and also go and visit dove farms who's another, another youtuber as well so nice nice to visit so showing us around quick brew as well something to do on a wet saturday when i can't go spraying so I'll see you all tomorrow and there's the birthday bumper which I've had to sort of make because I wasn't in the yard for all the birthdays.